Hello class, today we will be going over chapter five and that is selecting a topic and a purpose for your speech. So the first step in speech making is choosing your topic. What is it that you wanna talk about? The topic is the actual subject of your speech. And there are two broad categories for some potential topics um, for you to come up with ideas. The first one are subjects that you know a lot about already. And number two are subjects that you want to know about, that you have a genuine interest to learn more about and um, you're really interested in that subject. So most people speak best about subjects which they are already most familiar with. When you are thinking about a topic, you want to pull from your own knowledge and experience. Everyone knows things or has done things that can be used in a speech. So think about a moment, maybe you have some unusual experiences that you've had, or maybe you have special expertise that you've acquired um, over the time. Uh, you might think that you don't when you actually stop and think about it, you'll probably come up with some good ideas. So some examples from the book, one student who grew up in Turkey presented a fascinating speech about the daily life in that country. Another student used her knowledge as a jewelry store salesperson to prepare a speech on how to judge the value of cut diamonds. A third student who lived through a tornado gave a gripping speech about that terrifying experience. So you really wanna think about what type of knowledge and experience you already have. You know, Maybe you uh, worked at a certain uh, field or a certain store that other people aren't familiar with. Maybe you've visited a certain state or country. Um, so that would be something interesting to, to present about. Or you've had certain experiences that are unique. So these are some ideas that you can come up with to brainstorm on a topic. Um, we kind of did those introductions. Y'all have talked about how some of y'all play volleyball or y'all are in a uh, you know, certain group membership, some things that others might not be familiar with, um, you know, or showing certain livestock or animals. So all of this would be ideas that you can generate um, in order to pick a topic for your speech. So you might want to make your speech a learning experience for yourself as well as for your audience if you choose to um, choose a subject that you would like to learn more about. This would be that perfect opportunity to research a fascinating subject and turn it into a fascinating speech. You might run across a subject maybe in a different class that really catches your attention and that you want to learn more about. So you can use what you're learning in other classes um, as topics. Another possibility, especially for your persuasive speech, is to think about subjects which you hold strong opinions or beliefs about. Remember, whatever your topic is, you have to make sure that it, it is interesting to you because how can you really sell it or how can you really make it interesting for your audience if you're not really that interested in the topic itself? Topics you want to know more about. So these subjects may include national, they could be international concerns such as school safety or environmental protection. It can be a local issue or an issue that's at a much larger scale. Not all the topics have to be political, just something that you are interested in about. So remember that as we are working on our assignments, your first assignment will be an informative speech. You're basically acting as an instructor. You're informing us about this topic. That one then will be continued and you'll turn it into your persuasive speech where you actually want us to think more about or do something, some type of action in regards to what you had informed us about. So procedures to get started, brainstorming. That's an actual method where you generate ideas by free association of words and thoughts. So you want to look at your personal inventory, make a quick inventory of your experiences, your interests, hobbies, skills, beliefs, and so on. Just jot down anything that comes to your mind. And from that list, you already have um, you know, potential options where you can get that general subject area and fashion it or narrow it down into a specific topic. 
The other method is clustering. Um, so for this technique, you would take a sheet of paper and divide it into nine columns. The first one would be people, places, things, events, processes, concepts, natural phenomena, problems, and plans and policies. Then under each of those columns, you'll list the first four or five things that come to your mind. These can then be potential topics and you just keep on working with those um, as sub lists until you have four to five ideas on your list. So the book provides us an example of those columns and um, coming up with the first four or five things that come to mind. So you'll see here the specific ones for pro problems. One of them is campus crime. Under natural phenomena, um, it's lightning. And under things, one of them is movies. So let's say you narrow it down to these three that you're most interested from that brainstorming or clustering. So here are those three. From there, then you continue that word association. Um, so in this case, movies, the next thing that came to mind was Academy Awards. From Academy Awards, the next thing that came to mind were prizes. From prizes, next thing was lotteries and lotteries in association to gambling. Here's a campus crime example and lightning example. So you can see how this pattern or this method follows that association. For the movies one, it led to thinking about the Academy Awards from there to prizes, narrow it down to maybe lotteries and then to gambling. So once this student came to the gambling, they were able to um, come up with a speech idea titled gambling addiction, why you can't be the odds. So just with this whole clustering method, they're finally able to narrow down to the topic and specific subject um, or title for their speech topic. Some other methods would be doing an internet search, just browse through a subject-based uh, website or an online encyclopedia or some other reference portal until you can come across what might be a good topic. One student scanned the online dictionary, limiting their search to one letter, in this case, the letter S, and within 10 minutes had come up with some potential topics. So here we can see salaries, sinkholes, state, states' rights, spiders, sleepwalking, stars, Singapore, and so on. So the main thing is you want to start early. The earlier that you start brainstorming and thinking about your ideas, the more time you have to really uh, narrow down what your specific topic or title of your uh, speech will be. Then that means you have more time to really research, get really good um, statistics, quotations, supporting information and facts to really um, help push your uh, speeches. And the more time that you'll have in actually putting that together and organizing it to really be effective and in rehearsing it. That way, the more you rehearse it, the more you um, have it down you know, in your mind, you don't really have to memorize it. So it'll be easier when you present. You want to pay attention to interesting subjects also in conversation, maybe around campus. There are some interesting topics uh, people are talking about. Uh, it might be, you know, at home, you might hear something on the television, read something on the internet or the newspapers or online magazines. So be aware of what's going on, what people are talking about, and it might be a really good topic uh, that you can come up with a presentation. So just jot down ideas for your topics as they occur to you as you're thinking about it, you might be working out and come up with a really good idea. Um, so just make a note on your phone, maybe. Or sometimes as you're going to sleep, you know, sometimes your brain is working and you come up with something, write it down. So the more that you have a good inventory of possible topics to choose from, the better. That way you're not racking your mind last minute with a speech topic that really isn't interesting to you. And therefore, probably not going to be very interesting to the audience. So once you have your topic down, the next step is determining the general purpose of your speech. And that is, what is my broad goal for this speech? Typically, 
it will fall under two overlapping categories. The first one is to inform. So once again, that's where you're acting as a, teach as a teacher, you're lecturing. Your goal is just to convey information clearly, accurately, and interestingly. So your aim is to enhance the knowledge and understanding of your listeners, to give them information they did not have before. Notice they did not have before. So when you do an informative speech, you don't want to just skim information. Um, you know, you might find a few facts here and there, put that together. But usually when you're just skimming the top of your research, that's information that probably everybody else has access to, everybody is familiar with. So when you do an informative speech, you wanna make sure that you really dig deep, you find new information and research that's interesting and that most people don't already have, it's not prior knowledge. The second general purpose would be to persuade. That's where you're acting as an advocate for this topic or this issue. You're going beyond informing. You want to change or structure the attitudes or actions of your audience. So for persuasive speeches, your primary goal is to win over your listeners to your point of view, to get them to believe something or to do something as a result of your speech. So that's when you are doing your general purpose. You're just trying to figure out, am I just trying to inform them or am I trying to persuade them? For our first speech, we are just gonna be focusing on informing and then we'll be doing a persuasive speech later. So once you've decided your general purpose, let's say we are doing the informative speech, then we have to think what is our specific purpose with this speech? So a specific purpose is a single infinitive phrase that states precisely what a speaker hopes to accomplish in their speech. Once you choose your topic and you found your general purpose, you have to narrow down your choices to determine the specific purpose of your speech. The specific purpose should focus on only one aspect of a topic. You should be able to state your specific purpose in a single infinitive phrase on what you plan to accomplish with your speech. So here are some examples. Let's say you are trying to brainstorm what you want to write about and you come up with a topic, which is very general. You say, well, I work with music therapy. That's something that I want to um, inform them about. So then what's your general purpose? To inform, not to persuade. Then you would say, well, what's my specific purpose? In this case, that specific purpose is to inform my audience about the benefits of music therapy for people with psychological or cognitive disabilities. You see how it's very, very concise. Um, it's very to the point. So with every different informative speech, you might be talking about the same topic. You might have two people talking about the same topic, but their specific purpose can completely vary one from the other because there's different directions that you can go within that topic. So how do you formulate your specific purpose statement? First, you want to write your purpose statement as a full infinitive phrase, not as a fragment. So here's an example. Let's say you're talking about avalanches. You're not just gonna say avalanches. You have to say to inform my audience about the three major kinds of avalanches. Secondly, you want to express your purpose statement as a statement, not as a question. So let's say somebody's doing a speech about the Mexican celebration Cinco de Mayo. Ineffective would be, what is Cinco de Mayo? Instead, you would actually say to inform and notice the to inform, that's where you know it's infinitive because it begins with a to or it begins with the word to. To inform my audience about the history of Mexico's Cinco de Mayo celebration. You want to avoid figurative language in your purpose statement. Uh, so an ineffective example of using figurative language would be to persuade my audience that the campus po policy on student parking really stinks. That's figurative, that's very general. Um, you know, the audience is gonna say, okay, well, it really stinks. Uh, probably a better way to say that is it's not effective. Um, however, you're not really stating what the issue is or maybe what the solution would be. So a more effective way would be to persuade my audience that the campus policy on student parking should be revised 
to provide more spaces for students before 5 p.m. So you'll see how specific this is. It's saying the policy should be revised. So you're no, you know that the speaker is implying there's an issue and to provide more spaces. So they're providing a solution to that. Number four, you wanna limit your purpose statement to one distinct idea. So in this case, an ineffective way would be to persuade my audience to become literacy tutors and to donate time to meal, Meals on Wheels. These are two distinct ideas um, that aren't really even related to each other. And you might not have the time allotted to cover both. So here, those are two complete different speeches. You could either do a persuasive speech to persuade my audience to become literacy tutors or a different speech to persuade my audience to donate time to Meals on Wheels. But you, won't, you don't want to mix uh, two different ideas into one speech. Number five, make sure your purpose statement is not too vague or too general. So an ineffective example would be to persuade my audience that something should be done about campus littering. Um, an effective version of that would be to persuade my audience that we must request the campus to implement a policy against littering around campus. The effective purpose statement is a lot more sharper. It's more concise. And the more concise, the, easy, or the easier it will be for you to actually prepare your speech because you have a better um, goal or aim or purpose uh, of what you're gonna be researching, what it is you gotta be arguing and supporting. So once again, here's a summary of formulating the specific purpose statement. You wanna write it as a full infinitive phrase, not as a fragment. Express your purpose as a statement, not as a question. Avoid figurative language in your purpose statement. Limit your purpose statement to one distinct idea and make sure your purpose statement is not too vague or general. So some questions to ask about your specific purpose to make sure that you're on the right track is, does it meet my assignment? Well, it depends. Is your assignment to inform? Is it to persuade? Is it to entertain or to present an award to someone? Or is it a motivational speech? So those are the questions you need to ask yourself in order to really know what your specific purpose should be. Can I accomplish it in the allotted time? So you want to know how much time you have allotted for your speech in order to know, is this a topic that I can cover within that time. It'll help you in order to really um, develop and prepare your speech. You don't wanna to have too many points. You wanna have just enough points, one to two, um, that you can really uh, cover within that time. Is it relevant to my audience? No matter how well you construct your speech, it will fall flat unless you speak about it in these matters of interest to your listeners. So you wanna make sure that it is something that's relevant to them. Um, so for example, let's say you are gonna present a speech to some um, middle, middle school aged group. Uh, you, you might do something about the stock market, but that probably won't be very relevant to them. They really don't understand or have an interest to that. So you wanna make sure that the topic is relevant to who your audience is. Is it too trivial for my audience? Um, some examples are if you were to do a speech about informing your audience how to do the laundry or inform, informing the audience on the different parts that make up a car or a backpack. You know, all this information is already um, common knowledge. As we kind of said, it's not interesting, but some things can even be very trivial that you're really not going to have the audience's uh, attention. And is it too technical for my audience? So although you might be familiar with principles and vocabulary of a certain topic, maybe a certain field, it's a field that you're interested in um, or that you are in, most classmates probably are not. So if it is something that you are really interested in, just make sure that you try to avoid uh, jargon, too much technical words. If they are words that you have to use for your presentation, make sure that you define them that way as your audience is listening to you, they are understanding what you're talking about. 
So in your textbook, you have a checklist to look at to make sure that when you are um, developing your specific purpose for your speech, you are meeting all of those guidelines or requirements. So you have your general purpose, um, you have your specific purpose. Now you're coming up with the central idea. The central idea is a concise statement of what you expect to say. So this is your thesis statement, uh, also known as subject sentence or the major thought. So your general purpose, inform, persuade, entertain, obviously you're not actually gonna say that out loud in your speech. Your specific purpose, you're not gonna say that out loud in your speech either. That specific purpose is for you to know what is it that you're gonna be covering, um, how you're gonna be developing your speech, what type of research materials you need. The central idea, this is a statement or a sentence that you actually will be saying out loud in your speech, and it's gonna be included in the introduction of your speech. So it's usually expressed as a simple declarative sentence that refines and sharpens the specific purpose statement. It is a one sentence statement that sums up or encapsulates the major ideas of your speech. So a way to um, understand what the central idea is, uh, imagine that you're running to class to present your speech and you bump into a friend in the hallway and they say, hey, I heard you have a speech. I know you're in a rush but can you just give me the gist of what it's about in one sentence? And you say, sure. It's America's prison system suffers from three major problems, overcrowding inmates, lack of effective rehabilitation programs, and high expense to taxpayers. So that right there is your central idea. In one sentence, you say what that major topic is and what those major points or problems it is that you're gonna be covering. Um, so it's more precise than your topic, which is America's prison system. It's more precise than your specific purpose to inform my audience of the three major problems facing America's prison system, but it's including what those three are. So I want you to think of your central idea statement, um, kind of like a preview. Your speech or the body of your speech is going to be the actual movie. The introduction, where you state your central idea, is like that sneak peek, that trailer to the movie. Um, another good way to think about it is the central idea is the residual message. And the residual message is, what do you want your audience to remember about your speech after the speech is done and they forgot everything else about it? So it's that one message you really want them um, to remember and for it to stick to them. So here are the guidelines for the central idea, very similar to the specific purpose. It should be expressed in the full sentence. It should not be in the form of a question. It should avoid figurative language and it shouldn't be too vague or too general. So here's a chart just to kind of help you um, get a visual of that process. You come up with your general topic. So in this case, we have Dia de los Muertos. You come up with a general purpose to inform. You come up with a specific purpose to inform my audience about whatever it is, the topic that you chose. So these first three um, you would have as you're preparing your speech, you would type it out or write it out more to help you in the preparing, developing, polishing phase. But the last step of uh, starting and thinking of your topic is your central idea, which we just said is that one sentence that encapsulates what your speech is about. That would be the first um, step of actually writing your speech that you're including in your introduction. And in your textbook for the central idea, there is also a checklist there. So that is chapter five, and I'll be posting chapter six soon.